the privilege of being able to meet together this morning. We thank you that um, in our country uh, we've uh, made enough progress with COVID that we can meet freely. And we thank you that in our country we can meet without uh, fear of uh, attack or war. And we thank you that we can meet without fear of persecution uh, and of being arrested. Uh, Father, thank you for this simple uh, privilege of being able to meet face to face this morning um, to uh, share our lives uh, and to sit together under your word uh, and learn more about Jesus. Uh, Father, would you speak to us this morning through your word uh, to help us know you more, uh, love you more, uh, and encourage one another as we go out to serve you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> well, um, one of the big differences uh, between Taiwan and Australia is the way that Taiwanese people seek blessing through spiritual means. Um, the most obvious way you see this in Taiwan is there are many, many temples, uh, and people go and make offerings and, and do worship at the temples. And inside the temples, there are actually many gods, many different kinds. And so you can choose one or many uh, and go and worship them uh, as you try and seek blessing. Uh, that's one way. Uh, and some of the gods actually have different areas of specialty or influence. So, for example, if you're a student and you've got an exam coming up, you can go to the academic god and give him your exam details and pray that he'll bless your exam. Uh, or uh, if you're looking for love, you're looking for a match, or well, you can go to the, the love god whose specialty is connecting people uh, and make some offerings there. But it's not just gods and temples. Um, you can also pray to your ancestors, uh, maybe in the ancestor shrine in your house or uh, at their graves. You can go and again uh, do some worship, make some offerings and pray that they would bless you. Uh, or if you're a parent um, and your, your kid is struggling at school, maybe uh, it could be because their, their fortune, their fate is a little bit bad, has some bad luck. So you can go and see a fortune teller. Uh, and the fortune teller will actually help you uh, calculate a f fortuitous name that will bring good fortune. And so actually quite a few kids in Taiwan get renamed by their parents, uh, usually when they're doing badly at school, to try and give them uh, a better luck in life, a better lot, um, better fortune. So Taiwan is a culture where people are constantly interacting with the spirit world in different ways in order to try and get blessings. Uh, it's very different to Australia when you first go there. But I also think Taiwan's quite similar to Australia um, because the kind of blessing that people in Taiwan are seeking is actually pretty similar to what we seek here in Australia, I think. Uh, what kind of blessings do they seek? Uh, good health and protection from sickness, uh, love and someone to share life with, uh, a good job and a good income, a nice house and a car, and if they have kids, then a great education for their kids. Um, that's actually pretty similar to what most Australians, most of us would want in life, isn't it? Uh, a good life, uh, a blessed life, um, one free from suffering and trouble with prosperity and comfort. Um, so I wonder this morning as you've come to church, uh, do you think of yourself as someone who is blessed? Um, in the last few years of COVID, there's been a lot of changes and a lot of pressure. Um, maybe some of you have work pressure. Uh, your work has become busier or more complicated. Uh, or maybe you've lost your job and you're still looking for a new job. Uh, if you're a parent, uh, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, I've spoken to so many parents who say uh, overnight becoming a homeschool parent was incredibly hard, uh, juggling lots of kids at, at home. Um, it's been a huge pressure. It might be that some of you have the opposite pressure to families. Um, you, you would love to have a family uh, and a partner, but you don't. And so during this time of COVID, uh, the isolation has been extra hard. Well, amidst all of these pressures that we've been facing in the last few years, uh, where is God's blessing? Uh, what does it look like to be blessed? And especially for those who follow Jesus, uh, what kind of blessing can we expect? Now, our psalm this morning, um, Psalm 67, is a song that's all about God's blessing. And so it's going to have some answers for us. And uh, if you haven't read the book of Psalms, any of the Psalms before, it's kind of like the song book, the music book 
for the nation of Israel. And this Psalm 67 was one that they probably sung uh, once a year uh, together as a nation. So we're going to look at this Psalm a little bit um, and then see what it means for us today. So the first thing I just want to point out about this Psalm, uh, and we're on point one, blessing in the land of Israel, is that it's kind of shaped like a hamburger. I don't know if you noticed that as it was read out, but um, just like a hamburger has two slices of bread, um, two slices of cheese, and then meat in the middle, as a bare minimum, um, Psalm 67 is a little bit similar. Uh, it begins and ends with two slices of blessing, talking about God's blessing. Uh, then it has two slices of praise in verses 3 and 5. And then in the middle, uh, it talks about God's justice. Uh, so let's have a look at these three briefly. Uh, blessing, praise, and justice in this psalm. Uh, the first thing to notice is that Psalm 67 is all about covenant blessing. Um, the word covenant we don't really use much today. Uh, but if you read the Bible, uh, you remember that God made a covenant, kind of like a contract, with Israel. Um, back in the beginning of the Bible, through Moses, God made this national covenant with Israel. And in this covenant, he promised them blessings. Uh, God promised that he would bless this nation in the land of Israel. Uh, what kind of blessing did he promise? Well, firstly, he promised them spiritual blessing. Uh, he promised that he would show them favor and shine his face on them. Uh, you can see that in verse 1. Um, and then God also promised them uh, material blessing and prosperity in the land of Israel. That's what verse 6 is talking about when it says the land will yield its harvest. Um, God actually promised that if Israel obeyed his word in the land, uh, he would give them prosperity. Uh, they wouldn't have to worry about floods and mice. Uh, their, their crops would have a bumper harvest uh, and they would have good health. So there's a lot of blessing in this covenant that God promised. Uh, and that's the bread of this hamburger. Uh, Psalm 67 prays for God to pour out his blessing. And then it moves on to praise. Um, look at verse 3. Uh, let, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And Verse 5 is exactly the same. So why does the psalm suddenly talk about peoples and nations after talking about blessing? Well, it's because uh, God's blessing wasn't just for Israel alone. Um, look again at verse 1. Uh, it starts off saying, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. Uh, why? Well, verse 2. That your ways may be known on the earth your salvation among all nations. So here we see God's plan. Uh, in the Old Testament, what was God doing with the nation of Israel? Well, he was fulfilling his promise to Abraham to bless the world through Israel. So Israel's blessing wasn't meant to kind of pile up in the nation of Israel only. Uh, it was meant to overflow to the nations and countries around them to spill over to the ends of the earth. And so that brings us to the meat in the middle of this psalm, uh, verse 4. According to Psalm 67, what is it that should attract people in and should draw all the nations to come and praise God? Now, well, verse 4 says, Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you, talking about God, judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. God's justice here. Uh, the way that God judges with fairness and equity uh, is what the nation should long for and rejoice in. So in the Old Testament times, if you wanted to see God's justice, uh, where do you go? Uh, you need to ride a camel down to the land of Israel because Israel was meant to be God's little kingdom on earth, uh, a model society uh, of justice um, that was so just and fair that all the countries around would say, wow, God's justice is amazing, and come and praise God. So this is the, the hamburger shape of Psalm 67. Uh, it begins and ends with blessing um, in the land of Israel, and then praise from the nations as this blessing overflows, and Israel's society was meant to be a model of God's justice. It sounds like a really nice picture, doesn't it? Um, blessing, praise, and justice. 
But if you've read your Bible, again, you should know the, the history of Israel. Uh, they hit a really big problem. Uh, it wasn't that God didn't fulfill his promises and didn't pour out his blessing. The problem was that Israel failed. Because God's blessing in the land did have a condition. Uh, they needed to listen to God's word. Now, how did Israel go at obeying God's word? Uh, pretty bad. Um, there was a brief moment in the history of Israel under King Solomon, if you remember, when it looked really good. Uh, their nation was prosperous. They were rich. Uh, there was blessing in the land. It was a society full of justice. But they couldn't hold on to it. Uh, they lost it uh, because of their sin, because they turned away from God. And so instead of being a model of God's justice, Israel turned into a model of injustice and corruption. And so relying on themselves, they couldn't hold on to God's blessing. How did God respond to this? Well, as the psalm says, God is just. Uh, he turned his face away and judged his people because he is just and fair. He didn't ignore their sin. And so actually Israel, in the end, instead of God's blessing, received God's curse. And they were taken away into exile. Um, what about us? Uh, would we do any better if we moved to the land of Israel and had a go? Well, the Bible says we wouldn't really. Uh, that we're actually the same as Israel. If we had to rely on ourselves and our own efforts to obey, uh, we'd never be able to earn God's blessing. Because just like Israel, we all fall short in different ways. And so we're unworthy of God's blessing. But thankfully, we also read in the Old Testament that God didn't give up on his plan. Uh, God actually knew that Israel would fail. Uh, he wasn't caught by surprise. And so through his prophets, God promised that one day a faithful Israelite would appear. Um, one person who would completely obey God's word. Uh, who would uh, fulfill God's plan and show what God's justice is like. And that, of course, was Jesus when he appeared. So Jesus came uh, to fulfill God's mission to bless the world and he lived a faithful life. He always listened to God. And whilst he was worthy to have the blessings, he actually took the curse. Uh, that's why the cross was such a surprise for Jesus' followers. Uh, they thought he was going to come and be uh, the great blessed king, but instead he looked like someone who was cursed on a cross. Uh, because he was giving up his blessing uh, to take the curse and punishment that we deserve for our sin. And now he's risen to life and established a new covenant. Um, so now for us, after Jesus' death and resurrection, uh, we know that God's kingdom is no longer in the land of Israel. Um, you don't need to try and uh, fly on a plane to Israel to experience God's blessing because God's blessing is not in that land anymore. Uh, now the Bible tells us all of God's blessing is found in Christ. Uh, so let's think about this blessing in Christ for a moment. Um, if you've got a Bible, you can turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, I'll just read that out and it'll be on the screen as well, I think. Uh, to have a little glimpse at some of the way the New Testament describes the blessing that Christians have. So Ephesians chapter 1 uh, from verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he's freely given us in the one he loves. Uh, there's a lot we could say here, um, but notice Paul is saying in Ephesians that in Christ we have every spiritual blessing. Uh, he says we're, those who follow Jesus are holy and blameless, and he particularly talks about this idea of sonship. Um, that's not just for guys only. He's saying that the status of being a legal son in God's family is what every Christian can have uh, to be God's children and have this intimate relationship. And this isn't because of obedience or because we deserve it, but because of God's grace. Um, and if you're wondering, what does it mean to be in Christ? 
Uh, well, Paul explains that later on in Ephesians. Um, in verse 13, chapter 1, verse 13, he says, And you also, talking to the Ephesians, were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, uh, the gospel of your salvation. Uh, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So Paul is saying the moment uh, someone repents and believes in Jesus, in this message about Jesus the King, uh, the Holy Spirit actually unites us with Jesus. Uh, we might not be able to feel it, but we become in Christ people. Uh, it's like a new status, becoming a new kind of person. And what that means is that all of Jesus' blessings become our blessings uh, because we are in him. So Jesus is holy and blameless, and that means those who are in Christ are holy and blameless too. Uh, Jesus is a son in God's family. Uh, he has that status, and so those who are in him uh, become sons and daughters as well. And so actually for those who are in Christ, uh, we don't need to pray that God would shine his face on us uh, because we can have confidence that if you are in Christ, God's face is always shining on us. Uh, when God looks at us uh, as Christians, he doesn't have a disappointed or angry face. Oh, you've mucked up again. Uh, rather, uh, he doesn't see our failures in shame. He looks at us with a smile uh, because we are in Christ. Uh, our, our failures and shame have been forgiven uh, and paid for. And so this is the confidence that we have in Christ, that we know God's face is always shining on us. Uh, this is the spiritual blessing that we have. Um, you might be wondering, though, uh, what about the rest? Uh, what about material blessing? Uh, what about the things we often long for uh, in life? What about prosperity? Well, in Christ, uh, God has still promised all of those uh, to people who follow Jesus. Uh, prosperity and health and flourishing. Uh, but not now. Uh, he's promised all of those in the new creation in the new heavens, the new earth, when Jesus returns and this world is renewed, we will receive and enjoy those eternal blessings. <clears throat> so uh, now, actually, uh, we can still say every good thing we have is a gift from God and enjoy it. Um, in Australia, we can enjoy the blessings we have um, that are temporary, but we can enjoy them nonetheless and thank God. Uh, in Taiwan, we enjoy the good things there and thank God. Uh, but... We know this world is still under God's curse. Uh, we live in a world that is broken and uh, under the power of sin. And so actually, as Christians, uh, we ought to expect hardship and suffering. Uh, we ought to expect there will be wars and floods and disease uh, because we know we are living in a world that is still under the curse uh, until the day when Jesus returns. So let me ask again, um, do you, feel that you, do you feel like you are blessed? Um, I'm not sure how you felt coming to church this morning, uh, maybe dragging the kids along, trying to get here on time, shivering through the cold. Um, I have a friend named uh, Tor. Some of you might know him um, from City Bible Forum. Uh, to most people, uh, he doesn't look very blessed right now. Um, he's uh, single and in his 40s. And a few years ago, he caught uh, a complicated disease that actually uh, kind of went into his brain and almost killed him. And so now he's uh, he spent a long time in hospital and he's come home now, but he has some permanent disability. Uh, he can no longer walk freely. He has to use a, a frame uh, and his speech is very slow. Um, most people would say uh, he's, he's cursed, he's not blessed at all. Uh, but he would say he is blessed. Uh, he knows that his heavenly father loves him um, that God is smiling on him. Uh, and he knows that his disability now, uh, as frustrating and painful as it is, is only temporary. He knows that when Jesus returns, he'll be completely healed. So Tor, he still loves and follows Jesus. Uh, he makes his way to church each week in small group. Um, he, he does what he can to share the gospel uh, slowly with his speech uh, and to share God's blessing. Um, so, friends, if you are here this morning and you trust and rely on Jesus, um, then you truly are blessed, like Tor. Um, no matter what our situation is, 
Uh, no matter what the pressures we've been facing or are still feeling uh, or frustrations we have, uh, we can have a deep joy knowing that our Father in heaven is smiling on us in Christ. Uh, and whilst we don't see his smile yet, uh, the great promise of the gospel is that we're looking forward to the day when we will see him face to face, see his smile, and enjoy our eternal blessings. Uh, I don't know if you can imagine what it will be like when that day comes. Uh, our lives will actually be free of frustration and suffering. Um, our bodies will be free of pain, and I'm sure those of you who are older long for that in particular. Um, our lives also will be free of the struggle of our own sin. Now, often our frustrations are because of our own sin or because of others. Uh, and we look forward to the day when all of that will pass away and we'll have perfect eternal blessing with our Father in heaven. So this is the blessing we hope for in Christ. And friends, just for us, for us in the same way as Israel, uh, this blessing is to be shared you see, in Christ, uh, God's plan for Christians is the same as his plan for Israel. Uh, he wants his blessing to overflow to those around us. Um, if you remember in John's gospel one time, uh, Jesus said, John 7, 38, uh, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Uh, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. And then at the end of Matthew's gospel, he sent his followers out to go and make disciples of all nations and people. So Jesus has given his church a mission to go and share God's blessing. So um, when it comes to God's blessing, do you think you're more like a river or a dam? Um, you know, a dam stores up water and collects it uh, as much as it can, uh, but a river lets it flow on. Um, so, friends, do you store up God's blessing uh, or do you let it flow on to those around you? Uh, because the heart of Psalm 67 isn't really about blessing for us, but it's about blessing for those around us. Uh, the heart of Psalm 67 is seeing all the peoples of the world uh, come and praise God. Um, it's been so wonderful coming back to Enfield and seeing uh, a whole lot more people uh, and also from lots of different backgrounds and to see this uh, vision in Psalm 61 being fulfilled uh, as many of you come here and join in and praise God. Uh, so do we have this longing to see more and more people uh, from all backgrounds and cultures come to know and praise God? Um, I've been so encouraged as well to hear about the plans for Strathfield Fair uh, for you guys to finally get a chance to go outside uh, and meet more people in the community, God willing. Uh, to get to know them, uh, to build friendships, and hopefully to share uh, the blessing that we have in Christ of peace with God. And so, friends, I, I pray and hope and pray that here in Enfield you'll be uh, rivers of blessing, uh, sharing with those around you, whether it's neighbours or colleagues uh, or friends, uh, the peace that we have with God in Christ. And can I say, lastly, that as we share God's blessing, as we talk about Jesus with others, uh, Psalm 67 reminds us uh, that we should speak about God's justice. Uh, that was the, the meat in the middle of the hamburger, wasn't it? Uh, blessing and praise and then justice. Because in Christ we see God's justice even more clearly than Israel ever did. Um, in Romans chapter 3, Paul says that God, uh, Jesus' death on the cross was a demonstration of God's righteousness and justice. And I think what he means is the cross of Jesus shows us that God will not sweep sin under the carpet. Uh, God is not a, a corrupt judge or a dodgy dictator who just ignores sin and suffering. Rather, God is a good king. Um, he is a just king. And Jesus' death on the cross shows us just how seriously God takes sin. And reassures us that one day all sin in this world will be dealt with and judged. Uh, this is quite different uh, to the gods in Taiwan. Um, in Taiwan, uh, there are many different gods you can worship, but they're not good. Um, and they don't really care about justice. Um, so people basically offer worship to bribe the gods uh, to give them blessing and favor. Um, one of the most famous gods in Taiwan um, is a big red-faced guy named Guan Guan Gong, 
um, I think, yeah, up here. Um, as you can see, he's got a big kind of sword weapon thing on the side. That's because he's kind of like the god of war, the fighting guy. And so what happens in Taiwan, actually, is many police officers will go and worship him uh, to get his protection and help as they fight the criminals because he's the god of war. And at the same time, probably at a different temple, the criminals go and worship him, uh, trying to offer him worship to help them as they fight the police. Um, because uh, Guan Gong doesn't care about justice. Uh, he just cares about how much you worship him or bribe him. But friends, the one true God of the Bible is so different, isn't he? Uh, he is just and righteous, and we don't need to bribe him with our worship for him to do what is right. And Psalm 67 tells us this should cause the world to rejoice that God is just and good. And so, friends, as we uh, talk with people about our faith and about our God, let me encourage you, uh, don't be ashamed to talk about God's justice. Um, I think I don't often do this. You know, uh, it's quite common to hear people say or to see signs uh, that God is love. Um, and that's a true thing. Uh, the Bible says that God is love. But he's also just and good. And in a world full of suffering and evil, uh, his justice is a very good thing. It's wonderful news and a cause for joy. So friends, uh, as we look at Psalm 67, uh, I think we're reminded to rejoice in the blessings that we have in Christ, uh, to look forward to the hope we have of eternal blessing with God our Father, uh, to be like a river uh, sharing this blessing with those around us, and to celebrate and talk about God's justice, which we see most clearly at the cross. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, uh, we praise you that in a world of darkness and suffering, uh, you are righteous and just. And we praise you, Father, that at the cross of Jesus, we see what it means for you to be both love and uh, a God of justice. Uh, we see your mercy at the same time because of Jesus. Uh, even uh, unworthy people uh, like us can come and receive your blessing. Uh, Father, we thank you that in Christ uh, we can call you our Father and approach you without fear, uh, knowing that your face is smiling on us. Uh, Father, please help us uh, more and more just to uh, understand and know uh, this blessing that we have in Christ. And Father, help us to grow in hope as we look forward to the day of seeing your face, uh, seeing you face to face, uh, seeing our Lord Jesus face to face, and enjoying our eternal blessings. Uh, in the meantime, Father, please help us uh, to be rivers of blessing, to be rivers of living water to those around us, uh, wherever you've placed us, um, doing whatever we can to let your blessing overflow uh, and to speak about your justice uh, as the good God who is the king of this world. Uh, we pray all of this for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen.